I want to be able to help because I've had people who've helped me whenever I've been at a hard time, whether through my medical stuff. Um, so I want to be able to help and give back in that way. I'm a senior at A&M studying Child Professional Services and I this summer just got back from Africa from a month-long trip um, seeing a friend of mine which was a lot of fun and hoping to do something with kids who are at risk or doing something along the line with kids once I graduate and get my degree. Um, I started coming to Cook's Children's whenever I was 15 so it's 2009 whenever I had had a lot of muscle problems and in Waco that the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on, so we came to Cook's. My sophomore year of high school, I was playing varsity tennis and woke up the morning after running the previous day and I had a big lump in my neck and it started hurting, but we didn't know really what was going on. And throughout the day, the pain started getting worse and the pain was going down my right side of my arm. So I went to the trainer just to see what was going on and. She said she really didn't like the feeling of the lump in my neck and didn't really know what it was that I needed to go see my general doctor in Waco. So we went and saw her and ended up getting on some muscle relaxers because they, they weren't sure if it was a muscle spasm from tennis or what it could be. Um, we ended up doing multiple MRIs, trying to rule out other things and figure out what was going on because as the weeks went on, the pain continued to get worse and they weren't figuring out what was going on. Um, I made multiple trips to the ER in Waco and ended up seeing a neurosurgeon because they thought it was a problem with a bone, fra bone fragment in my neck rubbing on the spinal cord. Um, but that, neuro that doctor said that the only treatment for that would be to fuse my neck and he didn't want to do that to a 15 year old girl. So the pain continued to get worse and we had an appointment to get a second opinion here at Cook Children's. But I ended up getting worse and so we came up here to the emergency room and got admitted to the hospital and while I was here saw a neurosurgeon who said it wasn't the bone fragments that was causing the problem and the neuro he sent a neurologist into the room who said you need to see Dr. Acosta because I think you he will know what's going on. Um, Dr. Acosta came into the room and he said you have dystonia which is where your muscles contract too much is like having a Charlie horse and it can affect different parts of your body. At that time mine was affecting my neck and my back and my legs the most part. So I spent a week up here and ended up at the very end of the week getting Botox um, to kind of help that paralyzes the muscles to kind of help the spasms to give you some relief. So that's how we started. If you have to be sick this is the best place to be but of course you don't want to be sick so there's being a 15, 16 year old or however old you are, you don't want to be stuck at a hospital. But the my experience at Cooks are the nurses are so friendly. Like I have great relationships with the doctors and the child life specialists have been great to make whatever stay or like whatever time you have to stay here, they, they make it great. Um, but of course you don't want to be stuck at a children's hospital. But if you have to be, Cook Children's has been the best place that I could imagine being during this time. Through my experiences at Cook Children's, I have met people that have my same condition and I've been able to keep in contact with them. And one time I had to go into pre-op for a battery replacement and we, my mom had checked in on Facebook that we were here at Cook Children's again for to get a battery replaced. And we saw one of the other dystonia moms who has the same, her child has the same deep brain stimulation surgery as I do. And they came in and they were like, hey, we're doing brain surgery, or we're doing battery replacement today too. And so we got to go into the pre-op room and catch up with her really fast. And so just ha having those relationships of kids who are going through the same thing and we're able to contact each other and be like, hey, how long do you have to charge your batteries? Or how did this work out for you? Or So that's been like the best part for me is getting to meet and like have those relationships that we've built. I missed a lot of school and so missing that school you miss friendships and because I was in high school for most of the time whenever I was up here having to come for appointments 
so you miss things back home. And so that's the hardest thing for me is because you're missing things back home that you want to be a part of, but you necessarily can't be because of your medical stuff and what's going on. You're missing things with friends or families or you're missing big events. Um, so that's the biggest way I felt challenged. Um, there's sometimes whenever I've had to tell friends, hey, I can't hang out because I hurt or I've had to cancel plans because they're because I never know whenever I'm going to have a bad day with spasms or whenever I'm going to um, feel worse than like if I make plans in advance you never know what's going to happen and so there have been multiple times that I've had to cancel on friends and I've been lucky to have friends that are understanding and they know um, that I don't I'm not canceling on them just because I want to cancel but I'm canceling because I know that for me I need to get rest or I need to take care of me before I go in um, go to the movies or go out and do this. Um, so it's been nice to have friends that are understanding, but it also sometimes causes a challenge because you don't want to be 22 and having to cancel friends or like cancel plans with your friends because you're not feeling well or being younger and not being able to do things with your friends. I have a friend who, um, since I had the brain surgery, she joked because there's an option to get the rechargeable or the or a not rechargeable where you just get it replaced every couple of years or however often you need it until it dies. She wanted me to be rechargeable so she could take me to the library or take me somewhere and have, be like, hey, we need this plug because my friend's battery is gonna die. And so now in December when I did get the battery and I do have, or the rechargeable battery and I do have to be charged, her first thing whenever I got back to college because I was living with her was she wanted to plug me in and she wanted to help me charge. And so having friends that I can make those jokes with and it's, it's something that not everybody gets because they're like, why are you making fun of that? And it's like, it's a sense of humor. You have to be, you have to make jokes. You have to like have, find the funny moments in life to get you through whatever you're going through. Humor is definitely a way that I've been able to cope with my, my dystonia. I make jokes about um, either if my hands get stuck like this, I say this is the Missy hand, hand sign. Um, if my eyes are drooping, I just t tend to make a joke. Um, I had Botox one time that dropped these two fingers and I got stuck in a Longhorn and I'm an Aggie. So that was not good. And so uh, it's now called the Melissa Longhorn protocol. So every time I now go in for Botox for my hand, I have to tell him, okay, I don't want the Longhorn protocol. I am an Aggie, that doesn't work. So it's just something where you, I find the funny moments and I just make jokes about it because that, that's how I get through having this thing that not everybody has, like I just have to make jokes about it to make it funny. There's a one time during, whenever I had the brain surgery, the child life specialist asked if I wanted a picture. Um, and I was like, of course I want a picture. So I have a picture of me in brain surgery on the operating table. And during that brain surgery, I was awake. And so I had my phone with me. So I texted my mom and sent her the picture, which she ended up sending to my principal. And the principal ended up sending out to all my teachers or all the teachers in the school. So whenever I got back to school, um, most of the teachers had seen me in brain surgery, but that wasn't my doing. So sorry that they had to see it, but I didn't send it. But it's just fun ways to like keep things exciting. Um, my life is similar. I still enjoy doing the same things. I still went to college. I still hang, like hanging out with friends. I still like going on trips. Um, so it's still similar in that way. I still like to laugh. I still like to have fun. Um, so it's similar in a lot more ways than I would think, like, or than you would think, being as long as you have to be at a hospital. Um, it's just, I think, the way that outlook you look at it from. Um, my family has definitely been a big influence in keeping me going. I have a mom who has done a lot to um, support us during my sister and I during our health issues and um, and also my faith has played a big part in um, me being able to keep my positive outlook that has kept me being able to be happy and being able to keep a sense of humor. Um, I don't really know where I would be without any of those three because I needed all three to be able to get be where I am. I think for me the one thing that's kept me going the most is to keep positive that um, although the situation looks really dark and like may be frustrating right now that it always it'll get better at some point you know you never know what's ahead so keeping that positive outlook and that positive just your positive personality your just being upbeat about things will help I think to also help with your medical stuff as well um, if this happened to me 10 years ago I don't know if I would have been diagnosed 
um, dystonia, is, I feel like, is a relatively new being found out disorder um, where it's not something that's diagnosed as either cerebral palsy or something that could be seen as something that's in your head. Um, and also, the treatment of the brain surgery um, and the, having the stimulators, which help a ton with my muscle contractions, that wouldn't have been possible for me. Um, it's a relatively new procedure that they've started doing on for patients with dystonia. So if it was 10 years ago, I would be in a lot of pain. I don't really know where I would be. Because even thinking, looking back, if I didn't have the brain surgery, because there's things that they're treating now with the different places where they inject Botox for me that the simulators aren't necessarily able to get, but I don't know where I would be without the simulators. Like it would just be a totally different life that I would have had the past four years than I do with the simulators in. My personality is not an anxious personality. So for me, like going into the operating room is not something that makes me anxious. They ask, they still ask if I want Versed to make me a little loopy and I'm, I'm tell them I really, I've got this. I've done this four times in the last two years. Like I like to have conversations with the nurses and doctors because I find it interesting to see that part of the operating room and that's part of things where if I was on Versed, I wouldn't remember that and wouldn't have clear conversations with the people that I'm around. So this is a, my senior year of high school, whenever I had the brain surgery, I was playing tennis and I actually tore my ACL in November. So I couldn't play tennis for the rest of the year. And, but I still traveled with the team and still went to all the tournaments. I actually went to a tournament for their regional tennis tournament for team tennis right at the weekend after I had surgery for my ACL. So my coaches awarded me with this, or made this award and it's called Teammates Matter. And so it was for going the extra mile, even though I couldn't play where I was encouraging my teammates. I was giving Powerade because I couldn't be playing, but I knew they were. Um, I was cheering them on. And it just, for me being, still being able to be a part of the team, even if it wasn't playing, um, meant a lot to me. Getting to travel with them, getting to still have those memories, even though obviously I would rather be playing. I would, I loved playing tennis, um, but with a torn ACL and having brain surgery, you can't really play tennis. So I just took whatever opportunity I had to still take part in the team and still encourage the players that were playing. So they awarded me, which I was really proud of because it wasn't anything that I had expected. This is a banner or a canvas that I got on my first trip to Africa um, after my senior year of high school. I had been supposed to go or been signed up for a trip to go on a mission trip my sophomore year. And then that's when I got hit with the diagnosis of dystonia and there was no way that I could go on the trip. So I actually had to cancel two weeks before. My mom and the youth minister knew before I would admit, I tend to be quite stubborn, um, before I would admit that I couldn't go on this trip. So my after my senior year, I got to go for three weeks on a mission trip and I got this canvas, which I, it just, showed me how much progress I'd made in the two years. And so it became something that I was very proud of.